Do you need an example of how powerful the Mexican drug lords who handle the world's most dangerous Jalisco New Generation cartel, CJNG, are? Consider this. His brother, a kingpin, was arrested and released within 10 days. He is not just a single murderer or heroin trader, but one of the main roots of the CJNG cartel. Despite being captured, he was released without any charges. The reason behind this could be anything, but with the power and money that cartel bosses have, there seems to be nothing they can't do. In today's video, we are going to delve into the world of the most dangerous cartel and their acts of revenge. Stay with us, as this may be the most disturbing thing you have ever heard. You may have heard the name Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, mostly known as El Mencho, but you might not be as familiar with his brother, Antonio Oseguera Cervantes, also known as Don Rondo or Tony Montana. Antonio was born on August 10, 1958, in Aguililla, Michoacan, Mexico. He sometimes uses the name Joel Mora Garibay. Antonio's criminal activities date back to the 1990s. In 1996, he was arrested for heroin charges in the U.S. and then deported to Mexico, where he continued his drug trafficking activities. Many of his siblings were also involved in heroin distribution or other crimes in the U.S. during that time. In 2001, Antonio was released from a prison in Mississippi after being convicted for property damage. Working under his brother El Mencho, Antonio supervised the buying and selling of firearms for the CJNG. He also managed money laundering operations and passed on information about law enforcement activities to the CJNG. According to Mexican security forces, he mainly coordinated CJNG operations from the Guadalajara metropolitan area. On December 3, 2015, Oseguera Cervantes, a leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, was driving in Tlajomulco, Jalisco. He tried to avoid a federal police and Mexican army checkpoint near his home, but the officers ordered him to stop. They had been tracking him for six months and knew he was trying to keep a low profile. Oseguera was driving a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta without a bodyguard and claimed to be a clothing merchant. He used a fake ID with the name Joel Mora Garibay. The police arrested him, seized his vehicle, two assault rifles, a handgun, and some drugs. The next day, the federal police chief confirmed his arrest, calling it a major blow to the CJNG's finances. On December 4th, Oseguera was taken to Mexico City for his legal declaration. And on December 7th, he was sent to a maximum security prison in Sonora. He was charged with drug trafficking and possession of military-grade firearms. On December 15th, the court in Jalisco confirmed the charges, noting he had over 1,000 grams of methamphetamine. Oseguera's defense team requested an appeal on December 18th, claiming he was tortured and that the charges should be dropped. The court upheld the charges, saying the arrest was lawful. However, on July 15, 2016, an appeal court found that a required judge's signature was missing on one of the documents, which violated his legal rights. This caused the case to be pushed back to its initial stages, and Oseguera was eventually released from prison due to these legal process violations. In 2024, Mexican authorities increased the bounty on El Mencho, a notorious cartel leader known for extreme violence to avoid capture. Although they couldn't find El Mencho, they arrested his brother, Don Rondo. On April 22nd, CNN reported that Don Rondo was detained and was in the custody of the Mexican Attorney General's office. However, on April 30th, Reuters announced that Mexico had released Don Rondo. Security Minister Rosa Ishela Rodriguez explained at a press conference that Judge Rogelio Leon ordered Don Rondo's release, claiming there were no legal grounds to keep him in prison. Rodriguez questioned the judge's decision and said the Supreme Court was asked to intervene, but it did not overturn the release order. So, as we witnessed, even when they are caught red-handed, the power of these cartel bosses often means that the law is not upheld. 
the CJNG didn't rise overnight. It started in 2009 as a split from the Millennio Cartel, with the other faction becoming La Resistencia. CJNG defeated La Resistencia and took over Millennio's smuggling routes. Within six months, CJNG expanded coast to coast, becoming one of the most powerful criminal groups by 2012. Known for extreme violence, the cartel's activities caused spikes in homicides, kidnappings, and mass graves in Jalisco. By 2018, CJNG operated over 100 meth labs, generating billions annually from drug sales. The Mexican government considers CJNG one of the most dangerous criminal organizations, second only to the Sinaloa cartel. Militarized and extremely violent, CJNG has a special operations group and a rigorous hitman training program. The cartel is notorious for its battles with the Zetas, Templarios, and La Resistencia for control over territories like Aguililla, Michoacan. Combating CJNG is challenging due to widespread police corruption and poor retention and hiring of new officers, leading many smaller communities to police themselves. The CJNG is known for using extreme violence. After the cartel emerged, homicides, disappearances, and mass graves increased in Jalisco. The CJNG also fought the Zetas drug cartel in Veracruz, calling themselves Mata Zetas, or Zetas Killers. They were responsible for a massacre of 35 people in Veracruz in 2011, and later, authorities found around 30 more bodies they had killed. In April 2015, the CJNG ambushed and killed 15 Mexican police officers in Jalisco, one of the deadliest attacks on security forces in recent history. The group also has military-grade weapons like machine guns and rocket-propelled grenade launchers. In May 2015, they shot down a military helicopter and caused more violence in Jalisco. The CJNG has also attacked public officials. In May 2018, they tried to assassinate Luis Carlos Najera, Jalisco's former security secretary. In June 2020, they attempted to kill Omar Garcia Harfuch, Mexico City's public security secretary. That same month, they killed a judge in Colima and his wife. In December 2020, the CJNG was allegedly behind the murder of former Jalisco governor Aristoteles Sandoval. The CJNG isn't just a one-man operation. El Mencho's entire family is deeply involved. His brother, Antonio Oseguera Cervantes, plays a key role in the cartel. Meanwhile, Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia, El Mencho's wife until 2018, is a successful businesswoman in Mexico and is suspected of money laundering. She has faced charges and served time in a Mexican prison. El Mencho's daughter, Jessica Johanna Oseguera Gonzalez, has also been involved in money laundering. She was jailed and released in 2022, but continues to support her father's cartel. Another daughter, Laisha Michelle Oseguera Gonzalez, was involved in kidnapping at the age of 23 with her boyfriend, Christian Fernando Gutierrez. El Mencho's son, Ruben, known as Menchito, was considered the second in command of CJNG before his arrest in 2014. Despite being released several times due to lack of evidence, he was repeatedly rearrested on new charges. Unlike his elusive father, Menchito was often seen in public in Guadalajara, the capital of Jalisco, known for its popular coastal resorts in Puerto Vallarta. The CJNG had a longtime ally in the Queenies, led by Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, who is El Mencho's brother-in-law. The exact nature of their relationship is unclear. Some say the Queenies were the financial arm of the CJNG, while others think they were a separate but affiliated organization. So, these cartel bosses and their dangerous teams are becoming stronger day by day. Even the law struggles to stop them. Do you think El Mencho will ever face justice? Let us know your thoughts. Like and subscribe, and until next time, have a nice day.